Well, it was always going to be around the 1st of July that this would step up, this row. Because you'll recall, weeks and weeks ago, Michael O'Leary said, from the 1st of July, Ryanair are going to reintroduce schedules, 40% of all schedules, and we need to get on with it. Uh, then we had the Aviation Task Force report, which said, yes, we need it immediately because of the horrendous difficulties for not only the tourism industry, but job losses in airlines, um, in Dublin Airport losing a million euro a day. We needed to relax it. Um, but then take a listen to uh, uh, Margaret, uh, Dr. Margaret Harris of the WHO. They last night warned us the worst is still yet to come. And speaking on News Talk Breakfast, this is what Margaret had to say in terms of taking a holiday abroad. Really, it's a think about, do you really need to travel? And also understand that the holiday that you might take this year is not going to be like the holiday, the wonderful holiday no. you remember. And yesterday, at the twice-weekly now Monday press briefing, the CMO, Dr Tony Houlihan, had this to say about foreign holidays. Maybe 80-90% uh, of people are planning not to travel abroad. The corollary of that might be still a large number of people who are planning to travel abroad over the summer. Uh, and many of the places that would be usual destinations for all of us in the summertime are having ongoing challenges with this infection. That will lead to further infection being re-imported into this country. And for that reason, we are genuinely very concerned about that. OK, so where we're at is, last Thursday night, after the last Cabinet meeting of the last caretaker government, they announced, without giving details, that they were going to introduce green and red air bridges to countries that had low incidences. To discuss what should happen on the 9th of July, which is the suggested date of the change, we're joined by Professor of Health Systems at DCU, Anthony Staines, and Pat Dawson, CEO of the Irish Travel Agents Association. You're both most welcome. Anthony, what say you? I think that if anyone wants to take a holiday abroad, they need to sit down and very carefully consider the risks. If they do decide to travel, then they need to do the sort of things they would be doing here, or they should be doing here, maintaining social distancing, wearing a mask, particularly in crowded places or indoors, regular hand washing, and taking the precautions that we're all being asked to take every day. If by any chance you are abroad and you fall ill, please go to the local health service. Every European country has a, a good health service, well capable of providing care for you if you fall sick. Under no circumstances, travel home with symptoms, because that, that could lead to a substantial disaster. But if you consider all that before you decide to go, there is a risk that you will go abroad somewhere where there's a low number of cases today. There'll be a spike in cases. You might even be asked to isolate when you come back. So it's, it's not going to be the kind of holiday you would have had before. The restaurants will be restricted. Nightlife will be restricted. A lot of things won't be opening. Maybe you could do the same thing in Ireland. OK. Pat Dawson, what do you say? Well, I, there's not, nothing much I would disagree uh, with. I mean, uh, I had my, my first pint and meal out last night, and uh, like what's going on abroad, uh, we're all very, very careful, uh, just myself and my wife, and uh, it was an enjoyable hour and a half. Everything was scrutinised and everything else, and, that, and that's what's happening in many of the European countries, that the holidaymakers are all booked and have paid flights to go to, and uh, if flights... If flights uh, continue and people are not allowed, as the government has said, have said, well, uh, all those people will lose thousands and thousands of euros. So, um, what do you think, uh, Pat, should happen on the 9th of July? Well, I, I, I think the air bridges uh, is the best solution so far. And, and how that works is that the airports, aircraft and countries that are nominated, that they have only one chance to get this right. Like our country, we've one chance to get it get it right as such. So they they must make sure that everything is in order for, for for people going down there. And you only pick the countries with, with like minded cases as such. And the problem, Ivan, is there is no bar set of is it is it sort of as we're hearing from Europe, 
they're backtracking to the last 14 days, taking an average of that, and then picking the countries. There's no clear criteria whatsoever. We heard about this uh, Iraqi person who came in um, uh, to the west of Ireland yesterday evening. Now we've heard uh, that individual or individual okay. came by, by Belfast. Well, we, 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 we're actually looking at that story earlier, and that, not all of that is confirmed, Pat, but that doesn't take from the central point. The, the, you're calling for, like, at the moment, there's a very strong public health travel advisory not to travel, and there's the 14 days. So we have this aviation report and, and, and the task force report, and I want to remind you, what they're saying is, by tomorrow the 14-day travel quarantine should end, which would, you know, facilitate tourists coming into the country, that there would be a full national code of practice for safe air travel um, and, 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 and other measures. And so do you support that or, or, or what do you say should happen? I do support it. I 100% I support it. And that, that people take on the responsibility. I mean, there, there is a band, inbound and outbound. When you have a quarantine, it's as good as a band. Uh, uh, nobody's going to come to Ireland and, 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 and quarantine for 14 days as such. If they're coming here to do business, which many are, or many want to, or if they're coming here uh, on holidays. And the same thing with the outbound situation. So I agree with the task force, um, who certainly know their business, uh, so forth and so on. And they're certainly full of many, many responsible people who will not take big risk. We have to take even little risks. Our country will be bed, dead and buried for the next three or four years and will never, never recover economically. All right. So, Anthony, I, I, I got your public health advice and uh, your, 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 your things that you need to do if you do go abroad and availing of health services and uh, being careful and, and so on. But, but on the next question... Of, of state regulation and control and restriction, what, what do you favour? I think there has to be a balance. There are people who need to travel for, for good reasons. There is a time to start opening for tourism, but it has to be done safely because if we don't do it safely and we have an out, a second outbreak, then we will be locked out of tourism markets potentially for a long time to come. So, uh, as, as Pat said, there's only really one chance to get this right, and there will be very little tolerance for mistakes in it. You see, so there I is a lot of confusion, Anthony. Very careful. There is a lot of confusion. If the government felt so strongly that people should not travel aboard, as Tony Hewland does, why didn't they just cancel the flights? You'd have to ask the government that question. There's serious challenges now for people who have booked holidays. What is the situation? What happens? What happens if the rules change? Do they get a refund? What's the implications of that for the travel industry? What's the implications for the airlines, for the hotels they're booking into abroad? And all of that, I think, is still up in the air. And uh, like uh, one texter, one texter says, and, and this is a question to you, Tony, in terms of what is the protocol uh, in terms of air uh, code of practice for safe air travel? What about the four flights from America today and one from Dubai? Are these people being checked? What is the answer to that, Anthony? Yeah, I don't know what's happening, first of all. I, I'm fairly confident that they should be checked, that we have to be very, very careful about people coming into the country, both for their own sake and for our own sakes. But what the level of checking and testing is, I don't know. As far as I know, at the moment, we have no testing in place at the airports. And there have been disturbing reports, but no more than reports, of people who are not isolating, who are going, travelling around the country and cannot then be found when it's desired to find them. That's not, honestly, that's not good enough. Pat, you said you were in favour of air bridges. The government have been extremely vague about who's on the green list. I was interviewing Thomas uh, Ryan last night and he said that Denmark, Finland and Greece would qualify under the criteria having less cases than us. I mean, that would exclude UK, US, uh, maybe Portugal, uh, some of a spike there, uh, their, their links with Brazil and Spain. What countries do you think qualify for an air bridge? Well, we have to look at the situation and the situation. Could you just speak closer to the phone? I've lost you. I, I can hear you in the background. Pat? Sorry, yes. Good man. Now now go for it. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, I mean, there's no criteria I've been set. 
that uh, that you're in or you're out. So we need clarification from the government as to where they, they set the bar as such. Certainly looking at TVs and reading the newspaper, certainly the USA is, is, is in bad trouble as we speak. The, the UK don't, doesn't seem to be, and the England in particular, I think Scotland is fine, I think Wales seems to be fine, and Spain seems to be okay. But there needs to be the experts to say, look at the Europe, we have a bar, we have set the bar up, and you qualify and you don't qualify. And it's the professional people and the medical people and the government decide on that. So you're in or you're out and, and you're on a warning. Like Ireland is on a warning. If, if there is a misbehaving or if, if if there's a spike, be it in Ireland or in Spain or Portugal, well, then it has to be shut down again or proportionally like they've done in the UK where Leicester has been shut down. And can I ask you, Pat, because I've had a flood of texts here, uh, and I'll abbreviate, I think it's a very long text. Ger says, I booked my family holiday last November to Cambrils in Spain for this coming Saturday, the 4th of July. I'm not going due to COVID. But in his story, he says that a Ryanair flight is still going. He paid 1650 for the flight. To change the flight would cost €360. Euros. He can't get a straight answer from Ryanair. Will he lose his money? And a similar case from David. He booked a flight to Cyprus for September. The WHO says don't fly, but my if my airline honours the flight, will I lose uh, nearly six hundred euros? So my question to you is this: If the plane goes and you ain't on it because you've listened to Anthony Staines, do you lose your money? Yes, you do. And tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, all day tomorrow, there are eighty flights departing from Dublin. Cork Airport is up and running, Shannon in as well, and Knock. And there's thousands and thousands of people who are not going because the government says you cannot go. And all that money, families have worked so hard to, 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 to get a holiday abroad, that has gone down the drain. End of story. You see, Anthony, I have to put this because Tony and Tralee says, better to lose money than to put lives in danger. What price do we put on a life? A familiar refrain we've heard for the last uh, number of months. Uh, but you can understand people losing thousands of euros. Yeah, I, I can absolutely understand it. Uh, and I'm in the fortunate position that we, we had booked to be away now and we are eventually going to get our money back for that holiday. Um, and we're now going to Leitrim for our summer holidays, which will be very pleasant. But probably probably last rain, fun. don't you know? <laughs> well, hopefully not, but we'll see. <laughs> I send you a postcard. <laughs> indeed, but indeed, indeed. For, for people in that situation, I think what you have to decide is what are you going to do? There is a risk in going. Depending on, I wouldn't go to the United States. I think it's just, I think it's way too dangerous. That's personal view but that would be my view so you're saying a little bit horses for courses i think each each person each family has to decide what they're going to do they you have to take precautions which are pretty much the same whether you're in balahadreen or benamaldina it doesn't make any difference you have to wash your hands you have to wear a mask you have to maintain social distance if you fall ill you have to seek medical assistance briskly so the, ri the risk of going somewhere else is that you will come back bringing an infection with you that you wouldn't have picked up in Ireland. And there's also the risk you might end up being isolated for a period of time when you come back, depending on what has happened. And I don't know what's going to happen there. OK, the Anthony, the, the flip side of all that. of this, of course, is for every plane that goes out, there's a plane coming in. And, but, you know, we have we have quarter of a million people in the tourism industry who, you know, notwithstanding some reopening, are, are beside them. So, you know, take Killarney, you take uh, Galway and so on, heavily dependent on tourists, the whole Shannon region. I mean, like, there is another side to this, which is the economic side domestically. I think it's the same point. It's, it's about keeping safe. If people do decide to come to Ireland, we need to make them welcome, but we need to keep them safe as well. So no more than, than our own, we have a responsibility to mind visitors who come in the door. And every, every restaurant owner, every pub owner, every owner of a tourist attraction has the same responsibility. Can I run whatever it is I do at a reasonable level of safety? And for some of them, unfortunately, the answer at the moment is no. All right. And for others, they need to change how they do, you know, change how they do business, how they deliver whatever they offer.
Okay, well, you've heard it all there. A clear the new government in tray. I mean, no doubt on the issue of schools and the issue of foreign travel. Uh, the government cannot please all of the people and they're going to have to make some very tough decisions. My thanks to Professor Anthony Staines, uh, Professor of Health Systems at DCU and uh, advocating caution and Pat Dawson, CEO of the Irish Travel Agents, trying to get back into business.